start this fall. But let's close out the episode on this note from our friends over at Athlink, the 2024 Division Two II and Three transfer portal statistics. Now, taking a look at this, you can see oh, it's kind of cut off in your guys' screen there, but 4,000 plus, I believe that says 4,000. Hold on, I'm going to make sure. Yeah, 4,000 plus entries. Division two and Division three, from September 2023 to August of 2024, there were 4,000 plus entries into the transfer portal, which is absurd. 70% of those were from Division two, 30% from Division three, or uh, yeah, I should say from Division three. Now, I think this is where we should start, is that, you know, what was their experience level? Right. And uh, you look, you see there and it makes the most sense. The highest percentage of guys are the guys uh, that did not play on these teams that are obviously looking for other opportunities, whether it was, uh, you know, the coaching staff maybe didn't see them in the right fit. They had different ideas what they wanted to do that 40 uh, some percent there. You had 25 percent that played meaningful snaps. And then you also had uh, a, almost 20 percent that started. One and a half, I believe, percent, it says, of all Americans. And then 7% of all conference selections actually entered the transfer portal. And now, obviously, a lot of those guys, let's talk the destination. Those are the guys that are moving up a level, right? So, from the D2 and D3 transfer portal, you had 3% of those 4,000 entries that made it to the FBS level, right? So, we're talking, like, the biggest level of football. And I am not good enough at math. I guess 3% of... One th- Hold on, we're just going to go straight calculator on this, guys. 4,000. 0.03. According to these statistics, if 3% of all these guys, or of these, uh, you know, Division two guys... Oh, wait, hold on, I got to do another piece of math here. 40,000 times 0. 0.7. That's 70%, right? We're of Division two, so that's 2,800 players times 0. 0.03, 84. So, according to this number right here, 3% of those Division II transfers went to the FBS. That's 84 guys from Division II squads that transferred up to FBS. Now, does this guarantee that they are on scholarship? Absolutely not. It's just saying that the guy, these guys believe that they have what it takes to not only go up a level to Division I, but go to FBS level at the highest level. We also had 6% of them go to the FCS level, and then uh, quite a bit... Going to Division Two, obviously making that kind of lateral move. Some to Division Three. That non right there, I'm assuming, accounts for NAIA, and then uh, the UNC. I would assume that is the number that is uh, uncommitted. That's scary. You see that on the bottom there. Seventy percent. Seventy percent of Division Two transfer portal athletes uncommitted, and then if you look down. At this, uh, let's see here. I might have to open this up in a new, in a new deal. I apologize. There we go. You guys can probably see that a little bit better, but I'm going to try and zoom in for you here and get like, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay. 70% of those division two players uncommitted. You see there in the bottom, right? 81% of the transfers entries from division three still uncommitted as of August, 2024. Holy shit. Now, from those Division Three guys, looks like only 2% went FBS, uh, 3% to FCS, 5% to D2, 6% to D3, and 81% uncommitted. That's incredible. I mean, that, that right there is incredible. So we can do the math right now, actually. You know what I mean? So let's go 70% of that 4,000. So there are 2,800 Division Two transfer portal entries. You do 70% of that, that's 1,960 uncommitted players from Division II that entered the transfer portal. 1,960. And if you do the same math, you get 972 players from Division III that entered the portal and did not find a home. You add that together. Hello, calculator. Out of 4,000 student athletes from Division Two and Division Three that entered the transfer portal, 2,932 athletes still remain uncommitted. Wake up, people. 
This is ridiculous. That number is astounding, and I don't even know what to make of it anymore. Now, with that being said, there's still some other great opportunities being had for the people on here that are going to uh, you know, go on to bigger and better or even make that lateral move. Oh, shit, even make that move down from a D2 to a D3 or other, you know, vice versa, whatever's going on. They're going to earn new opportunities for themselves, and I'm all here for it. But just some really interesting stats to break down here. The largest percent of the transfer portal by position Looks like was defensive back at over 20%. Next up, the wide receiver room. And then offensive line, it looks like. Which is potentially a kind of a shocker. Now, looking at that, though, I think what, what does make sense... Oh, no, defensive line. Sorry, the O and the D look very similar. What does make a lot of sense, though, when you look at a wide receiver, a DB, or a defensive lineman, offensive lineman, those, those kind of groups that have the largest percentages, linebacker is right there, too. How many of them are on the field at one time? Depending on the package, you might have four wide receivers in the field. You might have four or five and a nickel uh, kind of defensive back type players in the field at a time. Linebacker you could have three, maybe four uh, on the field at a time. Defensive line, offensive line, you know the deal. The categories that are seeing a lot lower of a percentage at quarterback, running back, tight end, special teams, those kind of things, long snapper even 1% over there. Those are kind of situations where you typically only have one or maybe two on the field at a time, especially when you're talking about quarterbacks. So it doesn't make it doesn't really surprise me that there's not a ton uh, of quarterbacks coming in the portal because there's not as many of them. You only have so many. So I think uh, it's not to give a bad rap to DBs and wide receivers. There's literally just physically more of them on the field at once, and then therefore there are more players that play those positions. So I, I was very intrigued by this entire data set right here from Athlink. Shout out to them for putting this together because uh, some of these numbers are astounding and they definitely do their due diligence. Uh, this is not just some random thrown together list of all kinds of numbers. They really go through and do this. Now, the eligibility wise, you see, is actually really clearly split. Really clearly split. You look at four years, so the, the 26% of those transfer for four years of eligibility left, which is, that's wild, by the way, dude. Four years left and you're already out. 24% still had three years. Looks like 25 had two years, and then another 25 had one year. And uh, looking at this little number, you guys might not be able to read. I'll pull it up a little bit closer right here. 21% were grad transfers, which, again, that makes a lot of sense. Guys who get a degree, we just talked to Gaddy, Charles Gaddy, earlier on, um, talking about how he was a graduate transfer from Western Carolina, making that move to Northwest Missouri State. So, I mean... Let me know what you guys think of this. I, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts uh, on some of these numbers. And I think, you know, this first full cycle of the transfer portal. Yes, I understand the transfer portal has been here for more than one cycle. But, like, this feels like the first with, like, COVID and, and all the other red shirts and all the extra eligibility. We're finally through that. This I shouldn't say first. This final cycle of the big transfer portal movement. I think we're going to start to see a lot more stabilization. I have no idea, though. I'm not a... I just kind of talk about football, so I have no idea. Uh, in my opinion, though, I think we see some stabilization after this. One, because you're weeding out over 2,000, almost 3,000 kids from the transfer portal that are just not going to play football anymore, supposing those uncommitted guys do not go and find new homes. It's going to be hard for them to find at this stage of the game. That's a big part of it, right? You're getting a lot of kids who maybe just aren't, you know, they're done playing football. They're not coming back. They're not going to play football again, uh, competitive football at the college level in their lifetime, which is a scary thought. But also because, you know, we kind of understand how this works now. And kids maybe hopefully, hopefully are looking at these numbers like I am and understanding that there's a very good chance that uh, that might be the case for them. So we'll see if it stabilizes. Appreciate Athlete for all this great information. And uh, that'll wrap it up for today's episode. For D1 Rejects, I'm Kobe Manzo. Thank you very much for tuning in.